great week. My name is Michaela and I'm the kids pastor at Courageous Church and I'm so glad that you're here with us today. The last few weeks we have been talking about courage, what it means to have courage. If you missed either of those two lessons you can go back on our page and watch them. Today though we are going to be talking about having the courage to never give up. We are going to hear an awesome story from Connect HQ, sing a song, and then do a little science experiment. But before we get going, I want to ask you this question. What would you do if you found a wallet full of money? Maybe you would want to keep it for yourself and take the money. Or you could look around and see if somebody dropped their wallet. Or maybe you would just leave it right where you found it. Do you know what you would do? Let's see what our friend Tony chooses to do in our story today at Connect HQ. Okay, I said I was gonna read my Bible every day and I haven't read it once this week. Today's the day I'm gonna get a streak going. I'm gonna get a good habit of reading my Bible every day. Just gotta concentrate. Okay, now I'm hungry. Now I can fucking break. Now I'm thirsty. And now I have to use the restroom. <laughs> we are Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. Edison, and this is how I learned to not give up. Hey, we got a postcard. Want to read it with me? Uh, sure. Dear Connect HQ, I have a problem. There's this girl at my school. She's really popular, but she's mean to my best friend. Now she keeps asking me to be mean to my best friend, and I keep saying no. I want to be popular, but not mean. What do I do? From Charlotte. Hmm, that's a good question I know we can answer. In fact, I have a Bible story in mind, two by two. It's from the book of Genesis. Let's check it out. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God. Searching God's word for things to discover This book is alive Full of answers and godly advice This book is alive See the wonderful stories inside 
is alive. The earth filled up with people, but they sinned so much that God was sorry He had made them. He decided to send a flood to wash away everyone on earth. There was a man named Noah who wasn't like the others. Noah loved God and obeyed Him. God decided to spare Noah and his family from the flood. God warned Noah about the flood. He told him to build an enormous boat with a low roof, three decks, a window, and a door. In obedience, Noah built it. God told Noah to collect two of every kind of animal, one male, one female. Then Noah, his family, and the animals went into the boat. God shut the door. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Water fell from the sky and rose from the oceans and lakes. Even the tallest mountains disappeared beneath the flood. Meanwhile, Noah, his family, and all the animals were safe in the boat, floating on the floodwaters. God had not forgotten about Noah, not even for a moment. God sent a wind to blow. The waters went down. The boat rested on Mount Ararat. Noah sent out a dove. When it didn't return, he knew it was safe. When the ground was dry, God told them to come out. He put a rainbow in the sky as a promise that he would never flood the whole earth again. What does that have to do with being popular? People made fun of Noah for following God's command to build that gigantic boat. It seemed like a crazy idea to them. But Noah trusted God, no matter how unpopular it made him look. And because of his obedience, God kept Noah's family and the animals safe through the flood. That's right. So Charlotte should continue doing the right thing, even when it makes her unpopular. We are going to answer her question in no time. Want to help me? Uh, no. Great. Let's keep this ball rolling. Wait, what? I'm sorry, I can't help you with this problem. Why not? I have been trying to read my Bible every day for weeks. You want to know how many times I've read it? How many? None. How am I supposed to encourage someone not to give up when I can't even do it myself? If Noah can keep going, I bet you can too. Noah's Noah. I'm just Edison. Hmm. Come with me. So, what do you think? Is there an experiment we could do that could encourage Edison and Charlotte to keep doing the right thing? Well, you know what I always say, don't you? Delicious? <laughs> it's just such a fun word to say, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> but that's not it. I always say I love helping out with an experiment. Great! So, what kind of experiment shows someone doing the right thing over and over, even when it's hard? Ooh. How about setting up a social experiment here at Connect HQ? Here's an entire folder full of fun ideas I've been wanting to try. How about this one? It's called Continuous Loop. I don't know. It seems like that won't work. We won't know until we try. God gives me courage to never give up. I like that confidence. <laughs> and that would be a great point link for Charlotte. God gives me courage to never give up. I didn't even think about how much courage it takes to keep doing the right thing. We need lots of courage. And for this experiment to work, we also need a test subject. I'll do it. <laughs> Sorry, Dot. It would only work on someone who doesn't know about the experiment. But I can still use your help. You will need this. And a test subject. Leave that to me. <laughs> Tony, what you working on? Hey, uh, well, there's not a lot going on today, so I'm just spending some Tony time with Tony. <laughs> cool. I might need your help with something. Okay, well, you say the word and I'm there. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm in position. 
Ready for experiment one. Okay, so for the first part of our experiment, we'll keep it simple. We'll just see if our test subject makes the right choice. He's Tony. He's the nicest guy I know. He'll definitely do the right thing. <laughs> Let's watch. Hey, Tony. Hey, what's up? I found this wallet full of money at the park. Hmm. Hmm, there's not an ID in it. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers. Well, no, it doesn't really work like that. We do need to find the rightful owner to this. You know, just because we find something. Oh! That alarm means my muffins are done. Oh, okay. Well, I... I'll call the police station and see if anyone reported a missing wallet. Did you actually expect him to take any of the money? It's Tony. He's a good guy. Agreed. Now let's see what happens when we do it again. Hey, Tony? Hey, so I called the police station. I found this wallet full of money at the park. Y yeah, I, I know. We were just talking so about it. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers? Well, no, like I said a second ago, it doesn't really work like that. You know, we do have to find the right... Oh! That alarm means my muffins are done. Okay. What just happened? Now the fun begins. We just keep doing the continuous loop to see how the test subject responds. Hey, Tony? Yeah? I found this wallet full of money at the park. Okay, am I going crazy? So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers. Okay. No, Dot, come on now. You come on, you know this. No, that the money doesn't belong to us. So. Oh, that alarm means my muffins are done. Okay, surely that was the last time. I. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, Tony? Let me guess. You found some money and a wallet. I found this wallet full of money at the park. Mm hmm. Yep. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders Finders keepers? keepers? No. Listen, I, I don't know what you want me to say here, but we have to find the rightful owner, okay? Is, is any of this getting through to you? means my muffins are done. Okay, little wallet. It's just you and me now. If I ever get out of this time loop that I seem to be in, uh, I will find your rightful owner. I will do it. Hey, Tony? <sighs> your muffins are done, and that money does not belong to you. Whew. I found this wallet full of money in the park. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we're losing Tony. It's not always easy to do the right thing over and over again. I'm sure it's not easy for Charlotte, and sometimes it's not easy for you too. But it is encouraging to see Tony keep saying no to taking someone else's money. He just keeps going. Here they go again. Hey, Tony. <sighs> Might as well just have fun with it. What do you got there, Dot? I found this wallet full of money at the park. <gasps> you don't say. So the money belongs to us, right? Finders keepers? Yeah! No, I'm just kidding. We, we have to find the rightful owner to this. But more importantly, beep, 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 beep. Ooh, Ooh, that, that alarm, alarm means, means my, my muffins, muffins are, are done. done. <laughs> Tony never gives up. It takes courage to keep going. And he certainly has it. So, now that I understand, should we let Tony out of the experiment before he, uh, loses his mind? Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> mm. I'm just so happy that that was an experiment, and I'm not, you know, going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing me a good example. I was having a hard time setting a good habit, and I was ready to give up. You know, there's actually a verse that helps me. It's in the book of Galatians, chapter six, verse nine. Here, let's say it with me like this, come on. Galatians six, nine. Galatians six, nine. <sighs> so let's not get tired of doing what is good. <sighs> so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Nice job. 
You see, doing something that is good is not just a one-time thing. We have to find the courage to do that every single day. So I shouldn't get tired of setting a good habit. No, I, I wouldn't. And whenever you get discouraged or when things get tough, just rely on God and he'll give you the courage to keep on going. <laughs> Hi Charlotte, my name is Dot. We found an answer to your question. The Bible tells us this in the book of Galatians. Say it with me like this. Galatians 6, 9. Oh, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I know it can be hard to do the right thing over and over, especially when it's unpopular. Noah went through something similar when God asked him to build an ark. Even though it seemed crazy, Noah had followed God for many years and learned to trust him. Noah's courage through all those years blessed him and God protected him. Sometimes courage is a big, brave event, but courage is also doing what's right every single day, over and over, no matter what challenges come up. You may be tempted to give up and do things your own way, but Ask God to help you to not grow tired of doing what is good. It's awesome that you are being nice to someone, even if it's not popular. Keep it up. When it gets tough, just say, God gives me courage to never give up and trust that He will give you courage. Thanks, Charlotte, for your thoughtful question. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Hey, Edison, have you seen Professor Malcolm? I still have his wallet. Um, I haven't seen him since this afternoon. I set a timer to see if I could concentrate on reading my Bible. I'm almost done. Great job! I'll see if he's in the observatory. <gasps> no, 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 no. Nah, no, huh? it's okay. There's no experiment, Tony. I'm okay. just putting this away. Okay, okay. No. Oh, no! The muffins are done! The muffins are done! Just my watch. One way we can be courageous is by choosing to do what is right, even when no one else is watching. You don't have to be a superhero to have courage. Ordinary people like you and me can have courage too. Noah was a normal man, just like you and me. He wasn't incredibly strong like the Hulk he couldn't fly like Superman, and he couldn't talk to animals like most princesses. He was a man who was as normal as could be, and he showed courage by doing what was right. God asked him to build a giant boat, and Noah listened. Everyone else thought Noah was kind of crazy for building a boat, but he still chose to do the right thing. Last week, we talked about how we can know what the right thing to do is. And if you missed it, you can go back and watch that video. This week, I want you to know that once you know what the right thing to do is, God can give you the courage to actually do it. God gives us courage to never give up, even if it seems impossible. He's always right there with us. And we can also say our memory verse to help us remember too. It's in Galatians 6, 9, and it goes like this. Galatians 6, 9. <sighs> so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of a blessing if we never give up. Each day, we can make the choice of whether or not we're going to follow Jesus. We can choose to have courage and never give up. So let's stand up and sing a song about choosing to follow him wherever he leads us. Show me the path of life, lead 
Sometimes doing the right thing over and over and over again can be kind of hard. But God gives us the courage to never give up. For example, reading our Bible and praying are some things that we should do every single day. But it can be easy to forget. When we forget to read our Bible or we forget to pray a lot of days in a row, our heart begins to change. We might start acting a little bit more mean and we might be a little bit more tough around the edges because we are not being kind. You see, I have a sponge here and it represents you and me. And when we haven't been reading our Bible or praying, we start to be a little rough and tough, just kind of like the sponge. But each time we do pray or we read our Bible, our hearts begin to change again. You see, when we do it once, they change just a little bit. But if we do it over, and over and over again, our hearts are changed and we become a lot more soft again, kind of like the sponge now. And eventually we become so filled with Jesus that he is just oozing out of us and overflowing from within us. And God can use us to share our love with others. You see, I have a second sponge here. And when we get so filled up, eventually the love of Jesus it's just overflowing and the other sponge gets to know about the love of God and it starts to become softer too. And we just keep pouring out and pouring out until eventually everybody gets to know about Jesus. I am so glad that we get to know about God and the courage that he gives us. Let's pray and thank God for that courage. Jesus, thank you so much that you are always with us and you never leave us. Lord, I pray that this week as the kids go out throughout their week, that you would give them courage to do hard things and the easy, ordinary, everyday things. Lord, would you be with them every step of the way and would you just be with them and give them power and courage to do what they need to do, Lord. We love you and in your name we pray. Amen. Guys, I'm so glad that you could be here with us today. I hope you have a great rest of your week. See you soon.